the year, not only during Thanksgiving season. Because you bless us all the time. Even though sometimes we didn't see, didn't realize it. But if we can be like what we are today, it is because of you who have been faithfully supporting us when we were weak, comforting us when we were sad, and giving us new hope when we almost lost our hope. Thank you, Lord, that today we may gather together in this place to celebrate Thanksgiving, to give you praise, to remember how great your love is. We have sang songs of praise, and now please remind us with your word, especially at this time of crisis, challenges in our lives. May your word give us strength, encouragement, and new hope in you. Please anoint all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, since we celebrate Thanksgiving, today I want to share with you a theme about to be thankful. <coughs> In Budapest, a man goes to the rabbi and complains, life is unbearable. There are nine of us living in one room. What can I do? The rabbi answers, take your coat into the room with you. The man was surprised to hear that, but the rabbi insists, do as I say and come back in a week. A week later, the man comes back looking more distraught than before. We cannot stand it. He tells the rabbi, the coat is filthy, stinky. The rabbi then tells him, go home and let the coat out and come back in a week. A radiant man returns to the rabbi a week later, exclaiming, Life is beautiful. We enjoy every minute of it now that there is no coat, only the nine of us. Of course, life is easier without coat around us, right? But the problem is, sometimes, we still have goats around us. Not only one, maybe five or ten goats. The goats of health problems, goats of financial problems, goats of relationship problems, goats of school problems. The question is, how can we be thankful in all of life's situations. How can we be thankful if when we are surrounded by goods? <coughs> Remember what God wants from us? Let's read one Thessalonian. This is one of the most familiar verses in the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, let's read together. One, two, three. Give thanks in all circumstances. 
For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. How can we do that when we lost our jobs? How can we do that when our daughter is sick? How can we do that if we have so much problems in our lives? That is the thing that we will discuss today. Of course, it is easier for us to be thankful when everything is fine, when everybody in the family is okay. But that is not the case. God wants us to be thankful in all situations, in all circumstances. I want to share with you three things that hopefully will help us to be thankful in all circumstances. The first one, we need to think about those who have less than us. You know, it is so easy for us to focus on things that we don't have things that we have not achieved. That is why there are many reasons for us to complain, to be sad, and not to be thankful because we only look at things that we don't have. One of the ways to be thankful in all circumstances is Try to look others, those who have less than us, those who are less fortunate than us. And that will be helpful for us to be thankful. For example, if you think that you are unhappy because you get cut off your salary or something else, think about those who are less fortunate than us. Like this, for example. Be thankful that we don't experience flood, right? If you think your salary is low, how about her? A little girl who had to beg because her parents were so poor. If you think you don't have many friends, you feel lonely. How about that? <laughs> he only is accompanied by a dog. And when you feel like giving up, think of this man. No limit but still have hope. And even he can push his grandson on a bike. If you think you suffer in life, do you suffer as much as he does? That only happened in Asia. <laughs> in China or in Indonesia. <laughs> If you complain about your transport system, how about them? If you miss one step, you know, you will go somewhere in the ocean. If your society is unfair to you, how about her? Can you guess how old is she? Of course, she is not 17 years old. <laughs> she can be 70, 80, but she still has to work hard. And this is for children, you know. Do, does studying annoy you? About your team? No. Remember, you have many good facilities comparing to those who live in Africa, for example. They even don't have paper. 
They have to write down on the sand. 